web browsers. They either completely suck or are completely botnet. Well, today we're going to be uh, taking a look at a lesser known web browser, GNOME Web. Let's see if it sucks, botnet, or is both right now on Linux Lounge. Yes, indeed. This right here is GNOME Web. Uh, complete with the speed dial page with all the weeb stuff I look at. Forget you saw anything. Well, for a start, before we start looking at what this browser is actually like to use, let's uh, take a look at some of the more technical aspects of this. It's quite heavily integrated with GNOME, and as you see, it looks absolutely fantastic as a result of being kind of designed for GNOME. However, as a consequence of being sort of designed for GNOME, some people may regard it to be bloat. Now, is it bloat? Well, mm, that's for you to decide, but I feel like if you're using this web browser, you're probably using GNOME already. However, that is something to keep in mind. I would probably only recommend this for GNOME users, but it does integrate very well with GNOME. Uh, the next thing to say is, why should I use this? Isn't it just another Firefox skin? Isn't it just another Chromium skin like everything else? Well, no, this is actually based off of WebKit, which is the same as Safari, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's based off Safari, obviously. Um, and as a result, the performance is pretty great, and there's, in many ways, less privacy concerns than you would have, for example, running uh, Firefox or Chromium. Of course, you know, whether or not that's of interest to you, maybe not necessarily. Um, now for the actual features of the browser. Well, almost everything kind of starts in the settings page, and as you can see, there's a fair bit here. Uh, for a start, you've got smooth scrolling, which is quite nice to have. Just kind of smooths out your mouse movement. Some people hate it, some people love it. Uh, you can kind of set a custom home page, as with most browsers. You can remember where you sort of left off, which is quite a nice feature that, for some reason, some browsers do not yet have. Uh, you know, you can manage your search engine. Obviously, by default, it's DuckDuckGo, which is a absolutely fantastic choice out of the box, however if you like you can change that, you can add your own, all optional. Uh, there are various um, web content blockers, uh, you know, advertisements, web trackers, uh, pop-up windows, etc. So there is no need to run an ad blocker on this, which is good because unfortunately this browser does not support web extensions of any kind, which is quite uh, unfortunate, but I suppose with it being a lesser known browser, um, you can of course find the style, store data, all that sort of stuff. Now this is where this browser starts to get really cool. As you see here, this browser is 100% compatible with Firefox Sync. So if you sign in with your Firefox account as I've done here, you can basically sync whatever data you want. Um, it's largely compatible with everything Firefox Sync is, despite not being based on Firefox, which I find particularly cool. Um, you can open up what tabs you have synced on other devices, you've got your bookmarks, passwords, history, open tabs, and I can confirm that all of this works. Um, also, additionally, this kind of bypasses the need to have a GNOME web mobile app if you want to sync your data between the, like, you know, your desktop and phone. Um, so of course you can use Firefox on the phone, GNOME Web on the PC, which I do, and it works brilliantly. So that kind of is my recommendation, um, or rather I recommend it for this. Of course some people don't necessarily want to be syncing their web data up into the cloud, and that is 100% valid, and of course, you know, it's a real risk doing that. Um, additionally this browser supports, you know, uh, having kind of desktop applications, so if there's like a website that you use regularly and would like to be able to launch it from your application menu, you can go ahead and add it to there and have it as kind of a web app um, in a sort of similar vein to, well, I don't know, I mean, 
It kind of reminds me a lot of what you get with the Discord app and that, as in it just loads up the website mostly. Um, which also may be a nice alternative for the privacy concern to have a uh, sort of web app of popular proprietary services as opposed to the actual app installed itself, which is fantastic. Um, now, feature-wise, this browser is quite nice. It's it's obviously more minimal than, say, Firefox or Chrome, but I suppose that's the kind of target audience, someone who wants something minimal and polished. But how is it to actually use? Well, 99.9% .9 of the time, for general web browsing, it's pretty good. It can suffer some slowdowns for seemingly no reason sometimes. Some sites just kind of lag and whatnot anyway, so performance is a little bit hit and miss with this browser. Um, additionally, you know, you kind of try to open a few tabs with video playback or try to play that video at higher quality, that might start to lag too, so performance here isn't excellent. Um, additionally, there's a few compatibility issues with a few sites. Um, for example, YouTube's video player works absolutely perfectly, I have no complaints there. But I've tried many sites where the video player will work, but I won't be able to rewind it. Some sites' video players just do not work at all. A sort of workaround I've found here is, if that is the case, I will just take the URL and put that into MPV and then play it through there, and it works fine. But if you're the type of person to watch videos in your web browser, that will be a problem. Additionally, uh, there is no DRM support, so if you want to play Spotify, Netflix, whatever, you can't do that. Um, which, depending on who you are, could be a huge problem, a deal breaker even, or not. For me though, it doesn't really matter. So, all in all, this browser is a pretty nice piece of kit for browsing the web and I uh, would kind of like to thank the Linux Gamer for the recommendation as it is an excellent piece of software however this thing does have a few caveats that might make it unusable for some people such as you know kind of performance issues or lack of extensions uh, and one or two compatibility issues additionally some people may see it as bloat but all in all I would say that this web browser is absolutely worth looking at especially if you're a GNOME user or looking for a more, say, kind of private and free alternative to Firefox or Chromium. So all in all, this will be my main web browser going forward and I recommend all of you to go and check it out. Um, well, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.